speech and evaluation contest. Yeah! G-I-M-E-N-O. 
Contestant number six will be Elizabeth Stevenson. S T E V E N S O M. Contestant number seven, Bob Roman. R O M A N. <coughs> Now, in order for our evaluation contestants to compete, I need someone to speak for them. Please help me welcome to the lectern, Anne Lawrence. <laughs> Big circle ahead. Big circle ahead, Anne Lawrence. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmaster, presidents, anyone else. My daughter from the back seat of the car last weekend noticed a big circle ahead. It was clearly marked on a larger than average sign. It was an average day. We're making our way to Costco. We had some treats to get. And what had been a traditional four-way stop in Lincolnshire, Illinois, had converted into a circle. When I think of circles, I think of that one over in Des Plaines. Oh, I'm getting nervous just thinking about it. More nervous than trying to remember the periodic table of elements. You go up to that circle, there's a stop. You've got to try and merge your way into traffic. I'm not exactly sure where I need to go. I'm not familiar with the area. My palms are sweating. Just thinking. But this one in Lincolnshire, it felt a little bit different. There was this clear sign, again, larger than average that clearly identified where to go. There was not a stop sign. There was a yield sign helping me get into traffic. What is a circle doing in Lincolnshire, Illinois? Did I make a wrong turn and end up in Lincolnshire in England? I would have known if I'd been crossing the Atlantic. I'm sure of that. <laughs> it was time for research. Where do we start the research these days? The internet. The internet and? Google. Google, all right. So I found an article from March of 2011 that was talking about the specific circle in Lincolnshire. And the circle hadn't been finished yet, but it was talking about people's feelings about circles. And they were referencing that one over in the Splains, known as the Cumberland Circle, or as locals call it, the suicide, suicide circle. Oh. And so people are nervous about it. Are people going to know what to do? When I was approaching that one in Lincolnshire, would I know where to go? Would I get stuck going in circles around and around? I didn't end up going in circles around and around. It was really easy. That article from the Chicago Tribune led me to a Federal Highway Administration publication from 2000. 277 pages. Did you get that? 277 <laughs> pages available online for your reading to learn anything that you wanted to know about circles. But really, it's about roundabouts. There's differences in the government, they have all their details, and there's important differences to know. I had to know two things. Why did this show up in Lincolnshire? And how much did it cost? Right? <laughs> I started scanning through the article. From a government article, it was written pretty well. It had helpful tips in the, in the uh, guideline there. Three main reasons why you want to build a roundabout versus that traditional four-way stop. That four-way stop, has 32 collision points. Mm. Left turns, right turns, head-on collisions. 32 potential points of a collision in a traditional four-way stop. In a circle, it's reduced to eight. A 75% increase. Sorry, not increase, decrease. In a potential collision. The Insurance Institute of Highway Safety has done statistics that have shown these intersections and what happens when they're converted to a roundabout. Fatal collisions are reduced by 90%. And pedestrian injuries are reduced by 40%. That's a pretty good increase. So that's the main good thing <coughs> to a roundabout is redu reduction in collision. The second reason, you don't need electricity. You don't need power. You don't need to have signaling devices trying to tell people when to go when it's their turn. No power is needed. If this is more of a rural area and you don't have electricity nearby, it's okay. It's not a problem. It's not needed. In Lincoln 
show you where this roundabout is? It's sort of a rural area, and there's no electricity nearby. The third reason of building a roundabout? Easing congestion. I've been through this intersection about 2 o'clock or 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and it's Riverwoods going north and south and Everett to the east and west. I'm on Riverwoods, never really had a problem. But when you turn to go on to Everett, the cars are backed up a mile long. They're waiting in traffic. Stop, go, stop, go. What's that doing for our, for our emissions? How many of you have hybrid cars or electric cars? One. <laughs> <laughs> Two. <laughs> Those gas-powered cars are, are causing emissions and harming our air. The roundabout eases you through a little bit better and reduces the impact on the environment. That's the third good reason. All right, so now I knew why, like the chart put it in. But now I need to know the second thing. How much did it cost? This is a beautiful roundabout. You really should go and check it out. For nothing better than the beautiful value that it provides. It is beautifully landscaped in the center of the roundabout. The signs, as I noted, were large and clear. That had to cost some cash. I found a Chicago press release article. The estimated cost for the roundabout was $2.9 million. And I don't know about where you live, but my town doesn't have $3 million to sit in the bank waiting to go build around them. Here's what they did. 80% of those funds came from federal funds designated for fresh air because it reduces the emissions. He only had to pay a small portion of that roundabout. That's pretty good. So next time when you're driving around and you come to a roundabout, don't get nervous at the periodic table of elements. We're thinking about it's the Cumberland Circle. <laughs> Nowadays, they're designed really well. They're modern roundabouts. And these modern roundabouts are, were designed by the United Kingdom. That's the other thing. When you think about roundabouts, maybe you're thinking about these pictures that you've seen in foreign countries of these large circles with the traffic all congested. Those are the older roundabouts. These are modern roundabouts. They have the yield signs, and they ease traffic through. So next time you're going around thinking, hmm, where am I going to see a roundabout? It might be in your county coming soon. There's a couple more being built in Northern Lake County. In my research, I found some that are in, in Minnesota that have been developed. They're all <coughs> this Federal Highway Administration publication said that in the United States, there are 2,000 roundabouts. This was back in 2000. And fewer than 50 of those were in Illinois. The village of Morton is considering putting in a roundabout. Did you know they're the pumpkin capital of the world? Mm -hmm. Makes me wonder, is there a roundabout could be the shape of a pumpkin? <laughs> Thank you, Anne. We will now be giving our speech evaluation contestants five minutes to complete their evaluation notes. Mr. Sergeant at arms, would you please escort the contestants out of the room and time five minutes for them, beginning when they are seated in the preparation room. When the five minutes is over, please escort our first contestant back to this room. We'll also ask our timers at this time to begin timing Five minutes. Clarification? Yes. One clarification. Contestant number one, Rudy Segovia, is a scratch. Judges and audience members you may cross his name off your list. All right. All of our evaluation contestants are now out of the room. So while the contestants are preparing to do their evaluations, let's get to know better our target speaker. So please help me welcome back to the lectern, Ann Lawrence. Aaron? Ann, thank you very much for an, uh, an entertaining and informative speech. That's always the best kind. Thank you. Well, let's begin with the standard time Established question. Yes. What Toastmasters Club are you in? Who do you represent today? I represent the Ann Hewitt Toastmasters Club in Illinois. Very good. And how long have you been? I've been a Toastmasters member since March of 2011. 
March of 2011. Uh, Sounds a whole lot like seven months to me. Your math might be better than mine. <laughs> <laughs> and how many speeches have you completed? This today was my seventh speech. Right. Now tell us a little something, if you will, about the culture of the club at Aon Hewitt. What sort of club is it? Absolutely. It's a club that's tied to a business, and therefore it makes it a business club. Our culture is that we meet during the day at lunchtime, and we have a population of 4,000 colleagues that are in the building that we can pull from to be club members as part of our club. Terrific. And how many members are there? We currently have just under 30. Ooh. And uh, I, now that I joined in March 2011, in July 2011, I was now the president of the club. Wow. <laughs> did you take the job? I took the job, yes. Terrific. Yeah. <laughs> Dig into the personal life a little bit, if you will. What, are, what, what do you do on a Saturday afternoon when you're not I'm at a Toastmasters conference? Well, I'm going to Costco with my two girls in the back seat who are making identifying comments about the landscape. <laughs> and how old are they? I have a six and a half year old who is this tall. Whoa. And I yes, and I have a two and a half year old that's this tall. They're both girls. Wow. That's tall. That they're tall, and their dad is, is six feet. So I, I believe they might be surpassing that. We'll see. <laughs> uh, and that traffic circle in Lincoln Chart, mm -hmm. was that the first traffic circle you ever had to encounter? That was not my first traffic circle I had to encounter. I have traveled through Europe, and my now husband at the time had been driving, so he had navigated them. And I have been to the one that's been in displays just a couple of times, and it really does just give me heebie-jeebies. I don't know what it is about that one. People are nodding. I don't know what it is either, honestly. I grew up with traffic circles. There are two in the home by hometown in the state of Maine, which has maybe a quarter of the population of Lincolnshire. <laughs> and people know what to do, right? Absolutely. And how are the collisions? There are not. <laughs> there are not. At least, well, I mean, there may be. No, seriously. It's a, the, the roundabouts that she talked about are very common in the world, which I believe harks back to the fact that so many of the, the people who came into New England came out of England where the roundabouts are, are, are popular. All right, so we know that you're a Costco member. Yes. We know that you have two daughters. Yes. We know that you're president of your club. There you go. Cubs or songs? <laughs> Brewers. <Yeah>. I rock. <laughs> Ooh. And it's not that I'm a Brewers fan, right. but I'm not a Cubs fan or a Sox fan. Okay. And so... I feel your pain <laughs> when people want to talk local sports. I grew up in Wisconsin for about oh, nine years, just well. outside of Kenosha on a farm. That's been a uh, fodder for speeches as well. Well, for you. Okay. <laughs> and you know what that means then for football, right? Yeah. Uh, 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 sure. <laughs> yes. okay. What else can we learn about Anne? You asked about hybrid cars. Yes. Is that an interest of yours? I happen to own one. But I thought it was something that was interesting to the speech, that the, the circles do ease the congestion of getting through it, and fresh air funds were used to build that circle. But if people had hybrid cars, I don't know if the government would necessarily pay for it. If people had hybrid cars, there's less emissions there. Well, if there were enough hybrid cars, yes. it, were would, it wouldn't be quite, mm -hmm. quite the issue that it is. Then they would probably be looking to subsidize gasoline. Something. Yes. So I do have a hybrid car, and I love it. You do. 46.3 miles to the gallon. Wow. That's a big number. It's a big number. I put in gas like every two to three weeks. I also only live 16 miles round trip to work. Yeah. Very, very nice. Very interesting. Now, let's see. What else can we learn about Anne? We have another minute or so, perhaps, before our first contestant shows up, because I haven't seen anybody. Beatles or Rolling Stone? <laughs> Beethoven. <laughs> <laughs> we have things in common. <laughs> Beethoven, Brahms, Chopin, those are my guys. Yeah. See, I grew up with Beethoven on the radio as a, as a popular. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that old, actually. My mom is a piano teacher. <coughs> 
Did that lead to you being a piano student? It did, yes. Yeah, so I've been playing, my mom said uh, at age three I was hanging on the piano keys. <laughs> and uh, she thought that was the time to then start playing piano. So it's not, a, it's not a natural trait, it's more of a learning trait. Okay, and do you still play? I still play. And what kinds of things do you enjoy? Um, Beethoven, <laughs> Chopin, Little Browns. Do do? Remember these children? Yeah. So, yeah, so it's a little bit more difficult to play piano with children. They'd like to come up and play with you, which I certainly encourage. So I haven't been for a piece in years. <laughs> do they want to pitch in? They pitch in, they come over, they sit on the bench, they add in, they say, Mom, my turn. Very, very good. Excellent. Thank you very much for your participation. <laughs>
and offered its national transportation and safety recommendations. So combining all of those elements, I say congratulations on an excellent speech. And thank you for your presentation today. Valerie Fuson, evaluation contestant number two. Evaluation contestant number two, Valerie Fuson. of 
how maybe how villages can actually uh, support it, monetize it. The other thing is the organization. You started out great with the organization, and then when you came to your conclusion, I got a little lost because I felt like you closed three times. Summarize it, and then make a, a, an impactful statement at the end, maybe with humor. But don't bring in new information like the Morton Grove part. So summarize it. You get a great, great hook, educated us, and then just actually with the impact is uh, just start a little bit stronger at the beginning. And uh, just a wonderful, wonderful speech. Thank you. Evaluation contestant number three, Barry Mixon. Evaluation contestant number three, Barry Mixon. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and distinguished guests. When you're asked to evaluate a speech, the first question is whether or not the person can speak. We can all speak, but the real question is whether or not that person's voice, that person's content of words, that person's sound is appropriate for the venue in which he or she is asked to speak. That is the mark of a Toastmaster. And Anne, after hearing your speech, there is no doubt in my mind, my dear, that you are a Toastmaster. <laughs> you demonstrate, you used all the Toastmaster techniques. From the moment that you walked into the room, you began to demonstrate what the speech was about, the big circle ahead. I thought I was on Channel 11. <laughs> in fact, I can imagine myself being in your SUV, a nice one, 2011, and we were going on a ride. And what was amazing, I'm not from this part of the world, so you already began to make me relax. You told us that we were going on a roundabout, and of course I'm starting to get afraid because I've been to England, I know what roundabouts are. And you use the real mark of a speaker is to use the room, to use the environment to augment your speech. I don't know how many times you've been in this room, but you use the periodic table to show the room that it can be difficult to use a roundabout. But you calm this down by letting us know that this is different. These are different types of roundabouts. As I was sitting in your car, I began to see all the different areas of Northwest Illinois, Morton Grove and all these different places, and I'm taking notes saying, oh, I gotta go there, I gotta go there. You started using research and telling us that a roundabout is not just the street or road that we travel, there's purposes in using this. That 80% fatalities have decreased because of roundabouts. Pedestrians walking across the road, there's a 40% chance that we won't get hit by a car because of a roundabout. And we're just riding along. After a while, I started eating lunch. I'm like, okay, Ann, take me where you need to go. That's the mark of a Toastmaster. 
You included all of us. You used the whole length of the room to involve everyone with the car without into our trip. And the way you speak, I'm sure that you will speak in venues like this often, so please allow me a few suggestions to make your sound resonate to even the people in the back of the room in the cheap seats. <laughs> I would suggest that you slow down just a little bit. Use a little vocal intonation because after a while, I started, your speech started feeling like we were doing 60 miles an hour as we were going around the roundabout. <laughs> I love the way you used your hand signals. Use that as a place where you can pause. So, in summary, I enjoyed my trip. I can't wait to go on a ride with you on a tour of Northwest Illinois. And in the future, if I don't remember your name, please allow me to introduce you as a Toastmaster. Because although I may not remember your name, I will always remember your sound. Mr. Toastmaster. <laughs> Romeo Gimeno, evaluation contestant number four. Evaluation contestant number four, Romeo <clears throat> Gimeno. Good evening, fellow Toastmasters, guests, and especially and our target speaker for this afternoon. Great speech, and let me tell you why I consider that a great speech. And then some suggestions to enhance or improve the speech in the future. Why do I consider that a great speech? Number one, you have this kind of amiable confidence. You're confident, but not in a very obnoxious way, very amiable, <laughs> very likable. In fact, that was a persuasive speech, but it wasn't that that coming strong. You you blended persuasiveness and likability in one in package. Two, your gestures were, were terrific. You, uh, you had the circle on. Obviously, it's a circle, so, so you did use uh, excellent gestures and excellent uh, hand gestures of that. And thirdly, your voice. You got a very strong voice, great pronunciation. Maybe you're an English teacher, you know, in the past or right now. So, so those are your main strengths, voice, gestures, and persuasive likability. Now how can you make it better? I have a couple of suggestions. Number one, in the attention getter, you mentioned the word, mommy, there's a circle, right? You mentioned it twice, and a little bit fast. Uh, I would have preferred you stretch it, and maybe made three, three of those kinds of statements. Mommy, there's a big... Circle, right? You, you want to play the circle, stretch it, put a lot of emphasis on it, okay, make it three, maybe four times. Uh, build, pl play that, play those, uh, those phrases because that's the key word. Okay. Two, organization, right? Uh, number two, number three in the basic manual are all about organization. Organize your speech, number two, stay to the point, number three. In the first part, you, you, you mentioned about the fact that why and cost, right? And then follow that, you had three reasons. I thought those, those two parts can be combined together, maybe in three or four reasons. Even if you have to increase to four, 
because I wasn't following it, and I thought those two can be blended together. And I would suggest maybe having an acronym. The four or three reasons, the ABCs, and the ABC would be the first letter of the reasons. So that when you summarize, it would be a quick and easy summary. And I suggest too that you summarize at the end. If you did not summarize, you kind of ended it. And I was saying, well, I, for I forgot about the three reasons. So, in summary, great speech, persuasive likability, uh, great voice, great gestures, and one more thing before I forget. I would recommend that you put chairs here. In fact, I was at the table, there was big circular chairs. You could put a big circular table and you could actually move around. <laughs> so, uh, great speech, and thank you for uh, being a target speaker for this afternoon. Elizabeth Stevenson, evaluation contestant number five. were 
traffic circles were put together, and she used an example that was relatable to many of you in the room. Many of us know that Lincolnshire, and we also know the other one. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent use of statistics, keeping it very interesting. But what I also enjoyed that she used humor. And so I found myself sitting there thinking, wow, this speech could actually have been part of the humorous contest. As you were talking, doing things well, like vocal variety and eye contact and using the space, I thought, why not use a childlike voice when you describe what your daughter had to say? That would have gotten maybe some more laughs or some other interesting aspects. But why not use your daughter's voice? In conclusion, I think you did a very good job with a very interesting topic. I think that you kept us in front. <coughs> Use the space. A little more vocal variety would have been interesting, but I enjoyed your speech, and I think that I would be the one to listen to your very next project. Mr. Contest Chair. Bob Roman, evaluation contestant number six. Evaluation contestant number six, Bob Roman.
if you can do, just say, I should, I should have said 75% decrease. And that would have gotten away from that. Um, one of the things with the amount of talk, I would, would have brought everything into it except probably the cost. Because once you start getting into costs, that opens a lot more windows. And even though you mentioned the cost, the government is paying for it, but who is the government? We're the government. So we're paying for it anyway. So rather than if you talked safety, you'd probably get a better reaction and kept it on that track as opposed to bringing in the cost, the, the cost of the, the actual project. And then one, one thing is when you mention stuff from the internet, it's always good to, uh, to notify the author too. But all in all, it was a, ter a terrific speech. Thank you for being our target speaker. Mr. Toastman. Mr. Toastmaster, we have all the ballots. All right. While we are waiting for the votes to be tallied, let's hear from our Northwest Division Governor, Mickey Newberg.
was great. We're going to take a 10-minute break. It's 3.55. We'll be back here 